Welcome back to the Shouting Life Baptist Church and uh, appreciate all those that have uh, come out this morning and as well as those that are viewing with us online uh, uh, via the internet. We praise God for you and uh, just uh, praise God for the prayers uh, and the patience of God's people. It has not been easy. You know, I calculated and it has been, according to my record, uh, three or four months and uh, or 20 weeks. Uh, thir the 8th of March was the very last time we met. And can anybody remember what happened on the 8th of March? Alfred King was here finishing up our missions conference. Amen. And that was the very last time we met. The, the next weekend, I was all set to meet and had heard all about the COVID, this, that, the other. And the uh, uh, Lord really led me to go ahead and postpone our services. And uh, I praise God. We've had several of our folks that have uh, contracted the COVID and several have been tested to come back negative. Uh, but praise God for you and your prayers and your patience. We just thank God for those that uh, have upheld your stewardship and continue to keep things going here uh, at the Shining Light Baptist Church. Well, uh, do be careful as you go past the, uh, the camera. It is on a tripod, so be very careful there. And we're going to trust that those that are viewing with us can get a chance to uh, and enjoy the services as well. Uh, we're not going to be here long, but we do want to get some things uh, going, we can sing a few songs. It won't be an offertory time, but uh, if you would, uh, drop your offerings in the offering tray before or after, and uh, we'll do those things uh, indecently. And in order, hopefully you bought your drinking water, amen, I bought mine. We don't have the, uh, the, the, the drinking uh, fountain out there, we praise God for that. Well, we're going to sing, I just keep trusting my Lord. We're going to flash the words up on the screen here, so hopefully you can see that. Here in just a minute, amen, there we go. Am I in the way? Yes, I am in the way. So, can everybody see that okay? I hope you can. If not, uh, you know the words anyway. If not, follow Pastor White. He knows the words very, very well. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but uh, let's open up with a short prayer, and uh, then we're going to sing that song. Father, we are so blessed to be able to assemble once again at the Shining Light Baptist Church. Thank you that you kept things uh, operational and going. Thank you for the word of God uh, that we have and we can continue uh, to have and to hold. Thank you for the person of Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, Lord, we just pray now as we come back to worship here at the house of God, we might be refreshed and uh, rejuvenated and renewed in the spirit. And thank you, Lord, that uh, many things can be taken away, but one thing they cannot take away is our salvation and the word of God and the Holy Spirit of God. So thank you so much for meeting with us today. Bless now the services that we have here at the Shining Light Baptist Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. G2 is going to give us an intro. I just keep trusting my Lord. And everybody, I'm going to be in somebody's way. Amen. I just keep trusting my Lord. Here we go. I just keep trusting my Lord. Thank you. 
preacher, it's hard to sing with this mask. Yes, I know it is hard to sing with a mask. Amen. But it is good for us and it's safe for us. Amen. Nothing else, you don't have to sing, just hum. Amen. And I bob your head. And he's a faithful friend. Amen. It, it's all good. Praise the Lord. Well, we do want to be saved. And let me give some thanks here, first of all. First of all, thank you uh, to everyone that has continued your stewardship. We could not be here and do what we do without your stewardship. So we appreciate that. Uh, of course, you know, we have missionaries that we support as well. We're thankful uh, that you have continued to support the missions program and the general fund of the Shining Light Baptist Church. Thank God for my wife as well. Uh, she really was the catalyst to making sure we got online. Most of you guys know that I am not an online person. Amen. Uh, my wife encouraged me to do so. Shane came back to really get us up and running. And then Tamara uh, Hall continued to make sure that everybody kept uh, abreast of what was going on by the inputs that I would send her. And uh, she would send it out. And a lot of times folks say, well, preacher, why don't you send it out? I can only send 10 out at a time. She can send a whole bunch out at a time. Amen. And then my phone is limited. Uh, but she has the access to be able to send out multiple on one, amen. That's why a lot of times if she sends them out, I can't reply on them because I can only reply on 10, amen. Uh, we praise God for Tamara and uh, for Shane and uh, for Mrs. Dawson and the help that they have been technologically. They really, really made a difference in what we were able to do here over the last uh, uh, several months here. And so thank God for those people. Let me just give you some uh, things here. Make sure you continue to wear your face mask at all times. Wash and sanitize your hands frequently. Maintain the six feet social distancing. I know some that we, we, as a church, we want to embrace, we want to hug, we want to handshake, we want to do all those things. And those are all great things, amen. But this is just not the proper time for that. So let's make sure uh, we keep our distances. You can give you a little bump with the elbow or kick your feet or whatever you want to do, amen. We just want to be safe, amen. Uh, we are going to make sure we limit certain things here. No access to the auditorium temporarily until things kind of die down some. Try not to congregate in the bathrooms as well. That's a smaller area. Uh, making sure that we're uh, keeping that distance from one another is going to really make things up well. We had marked off in blue where you can sit, so try not to sit where it's not blue, and uh, that'll help out. Right now, it's not that many of us. We praise God that we have the ability to kind of distance ourselves. Amen. We will also do this, too. We're going to exit out differently than we normally do. Pastor White's going to dismiss us, and we're going to go out this door if you're on this section. Those are on this side. You're going to go out the back door. My wife and I will be outside this door uh, just greeting everybody that comes our way. We'll only be here, though, for about 10, 15 minutes. But we really encourage you to exit and uh, try to be safe and distance yourself. Uh, it's been proven the safest place still is at home uh, amongst your own family where they're not infected and you're not infected. Amen. Uh, so do keep those things in your mind and on your hearts as well. Uh, drinking water, please make sure you've got a bottle of water. Uh, that's not going to be available as well. So just keep that in your mind and on your heart. G2, we're going to sing our next song here. Uh, oh, you already got that there. Amen. He's quick. Amen. Uh, you know, we, we tried to make sure we gave you something that uh, you know and something that's easy. Uh, we'll try to make sure that the words are a little bigger next time for those of you like myself that wear glasses. And you can't see, amen. Uh, the song is, Oh, How He Loves it, You and Me. And uh, I tell you, isn't it good to know that God loves you, amen? Uh, when you can't come to church, uh, when you can't be around other Christian folk, amen, uh, it's good to know that God loves you, amen. Even when you can't find toilet paper, it's good to know God loves you, amen. Uh, it, it's been tough out there these past several months, and you know, I had to rely on Aaron to pick up some things, and even Aaron said it's been tough for him. He works at Walmart, amen. Uh, but we do praise God for that. Uh, oh, how he loves it, you and me. And as we sing this, uh, sing it worshipful. Just think about how much God loves you. Amen. And he does. Amen. And we will never know how much God really loves us. Amen. The church can close. Christian folk can be at a distance. But God is always right there. Amen. And he loves you and he loves me. So let's sing, Oh, how he loves you and me.
uh, just hum it, amen, but just really feel how much God loves you, amen. Just, just, just really feel that, amen. So uh, we're going to do that one more time, starting with the first stanza. And just think about it. Out of all the billions of people in the world, God loves you. Amen. amen. That, that's, that's awesome. And he loves you for you, not for somebody else, amen. And that is amazing, amen. Oh, how he loves you. Can you give us an intro, G?
Johnson and Faithon. I am covered, amen. Uh, we can say that in more ways than one. We are covered uh, on our mouths as well, amen. But it's good to know that we're covered by the love of God and Christ Jesus, amen. All right, Jeech, I'm going to get this on here in just a minute. I'll take your Bibles. We're going to go over to the Gospel of Luke, and I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already know, but just remind us of some things today. The Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of Luke is going to be over in uh, chapter number 10. All right, I should be on, G. Success? Luke chapter number 10. And I'm going to ask if you could, if you have the opportunity and you have the ability to stand, stand. If you don't, I definitely understand that. But Acts chapter, um, Luke chapter number 10. And I'm going to start reading verse 38. Very familiar story here. Mary and uh, Martha are having some uh, supper for Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 10, 38 through 42. If you can stand, amen. If you cannot, I uh, definitely understand. And again, just remind you of something that I think we need to reiterate here over the next uh, couple weeks. And I'm going to be at this particular theme uh, for some time here just to keep us reminded. Uh, Luke chapter number 10, uh, verse number 38. And uh, I'm going to read down to verse 40 and actually join in verse 41. And it says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him in her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was covered about but serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me, and join with me, 41 and 42. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. Uh, the fellowship of the person of God in Christ Jesus cannot be taken away. Father, thank you once again for the privilege of meeting today. Help us to enjoy your word just be reminded of what was given to Mary and Martha so many years ago and help us to take it home with us, meditate upon it, Lord, and allow it to affect our lives for the glory of God. We thank you and love you. Bless down these moments that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. You may be seated. Well, looking at this particular passage of Scripture here, uh, the thought that I want to leave you with over the next several uh, weeks and for today is going to be focused on what cannot be taken away. Focus on what cannot be taken away. Amen. How many of you agree that many things have been taken away over the past several months? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, let's not be, you know, over the edge. There were some things that were given, like stimulus checks. Amen. That, that's good. Amen. <laughs> Uh, but many things were, uh, were taken away over the past several uh, months, and uh, my goal is to encourage us to, to invest in or to focus on what cannot be taken away, more so than that which cannot be taken away, amen? Because uh, when you look at this particular area of scripture here, of course, Mary and Martha have the privilege of having Jesus Christ at their home for some supper. And uh, he comes to their house, and Martha's busy about her serving. And I want us to see some real, real quick things in this passage, and then give you some points that we're going to look at over the next several weeks. Amen. Uh, notice in verse number 40, we see the hindrance to unclaimed help. The hindrance to unclaimed help. What am I talking about? Notice verse 40. But Martha was covered about much serving. Amen. She was a busy bee. Amen. She had a busy bee attitude. Now, is there anything wrong with being busy? Nothing wrong with being busy at all. But if Jesus Christ is at your house, don't you think you ought to give him some attention? Amen. Don't you think you ought to give him some time? Amen. Say, preacher, but who's going to serve the food? Last time I checked, Jesus multiplied a thousand five, uh, <laughs> five fish and the loaves, amen, and could feed a whole bunch of people. I don't think he's bothered about not having some food, amen. There's anything wrong with preparing food? No, nothing is wrong. But Martha was covered about. What do we see? The hindrance to unclaimed help, amen. She had the busy bee attitude. Ask the question, am I more of a doer or a beer? 
a doer or a beater. Now, you need both. But are you more of a doer or a beater? Now, I have to confess, I'm more of a doer. And I need to be more of a beater. Amen? And uh, so we see the hindrance to unclaimed help. What are we talking about? He says, she came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bitter, therefore, that she help me. Amen. The hen just doesn't claim help. She's more concerned about getting some help, amen, than anything else. Amen. Give me some help, amen. Uh, oftentimes, we come to the house of God. We say, give me some help. Preacher, I say it all the time. Give me some help. Well, we need more help, amen. There's more to do than we've got ministers to do it, amen. And there can be this hindrance to unclaimed help. And then those verse 41 the hindrance to uncalled for homes, amen? The hindrance to uncalled for homes. Verse number 41, Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, amen? Now, Jesus says your name once, that's good enough. But if he says it twice, you better look up. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if my mother had to say my name more than once, I knew I was in deep trouble. And if she said Gregory Allen, that was even worse. If she said Gregory Allen Dawson, I might just go ahead and get, get, the, get the will out of the last testament because I should about to bury me, amen? <laughs> Gregory Allen Dawson. Ooh. Now, she just said, Greg, I'm, I'm good with that, amen? But Martha, Martha, Jesus said, thou art careful, anxious is the word, and troubled, disturbed is the word about Many things, amen. The hindrance to uncalled for holes. Uh, that which bogs us down has gripped on to Martha. And it's got her where she can't do anything. And Jesus has to say, wait a minute now. Uh, you're calling for help. It's got a hold on you. And it's a hindrance. Oh, man, we didn't know it. Amen. I dare say that before the COVID came, many of us were that way. We were cumbered about with this, that, and the other. Uh, we had this attitude, somebody help me. And we were not being, we were doing. And it wasn't until it was all taken away that we thought, man, it's gone. Church is gone. The brethren are gone. My job is gone. School is gone. It's all gone. You like me, toilet paper is gone. <laughs> Look everywhere. The hindrance to uncalled for holes. That which bogs us down can get the best of us. The hindrance to unclaimed help. The busy bee attitude can get up. But in verse 42, the heart's higher hold. Notice what Mary had. The heart's higher hold. One thing is needful. Notice this. And Mary had chosen that good heart. Amen. The heart's higher hope. Mary said, there's something else that I want to hold on to. There's something else here. I don't have these hindrances. I don't need any help. What I need is Jesus Christ, and that's what I want, and that's who I want, and that's where I'm going to be. Amen. And she said, I want to get my, my hooks into the higher hope of Jesus Christ. And Martha, you can be all you want to be, but I want to be for Christ. The heart's higher hold, that which cannot be taken away. Mary had chosen that good part which should not be taken away from her. During this pandemic, I think we were reminded of some things that can be taken away. Say, preacher, what, what could be taken away? The house of God was taken away from many. The people of God was taken away from many. Loved ones were taken away from many. Mrs. Dawson lost her father over this break. Others have lost loved ones. Jobs were taken away. Schools were taken away. Activities were taken away. Sports were taken away. You know it was bad when they got down to televising people playing video game sports. I mean, people are desperate when you got to look at that. that. That's just desperation. You know, you watch a grown NBA guy playing video games, baseball and basketball and football. You know we're desperate as a nation. We got to resort to that. Yeah. But amen. Restaurants were taken away. Stores were taken away. Lysol was taken away. <laughs> of course, you know toilet paper was taken away. 
was watching a program, they interviewed these celebrities, and one of the celebrities was trying to order um, four rolls of toilet paper. I think it was four, four rolls of toilet paper, something like that. And he ended up, by mistake, ordering four boxes of toilet paper. That's why the toilet paper went right there, amen. Four boxes of toilet paper. We're reminded uh, that uh, these things could be taken away very, very quickly, and it was sobering to think that it could be so. Who would ever thought in history that churches globally would be closed down, shut down, Christians were disbanded from each other, not because of persecution, but because of a virus? Who would ever thought that would happen? Hey, folks, we, we started this year off, and I was talking about things that are unexpected. Well, adi da, there you go. This was really, a, I did not expect to be away from that pulpit for four months. Yeah. Well, I was in the pulpit for the funeral, amen. Uh, but I did not expect to be away from my church that long. But during this time, we were also reminded of some things that cannot be taken away. And these are things that we already know, but the person of God in Christ Jesus can never be taken away. My Bible says in Genesis, in the beginning, who? God. John opens up and says, in the beginning uh, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The person of God in Christ Jesus can't be taken away. The pronouncements and promises of God and the Word of God cannot be taken away. Hey, the schools can be taken away. The jobs can be taken away. They can separate brethren from brethren. They can separate us from the church, but they cannot separate us from the Word of God. Amen. It cannot be taken away. The presence of God through the Holy Spirit of God cannot be taken away. David would pray, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We don't have to worry about praying something like that because he is forever indwelt in us. Prayer to God can't be taken away. If these can't be taken away, we must rely more on them and invest in them more than anything else. Why? Everything else can be taken away. Hey, when we can't be that church, what am I going to do? You got the Bible, don't you? You got the Holy Spirit, don't you? You got prayer, don't you? Have a good old-fashioned party with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, because we don't know the church may be closed next week. We may not be able to see each other next week. What are we going to do? Are we going to, oh, well, we can't go to church. No, pull out the Bible. Hey. Say, well, I just watch it online through the internet goes down. I tried to watch the sermon this morning and the internet went down. Mm -hmm. I could see the person's face, see his lips moving, but had no sound. <laughs> Amen. If these can't be taken away, we must rely more on them and in them than in anything else. I believe this pandemic made us see that we may have taken God and the things of God for granted. Can I get an amen? Amen. I think we took the house of God for granted. We took the people of God for granted. We took the ability to come and assemble for granted. So much so folks say, well, if I don't go, it's no big deal. It'll be there next week. And then it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Then it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see sister so-and-so next week. And then she wasn't. Well, I'll see brother so-and-so next week. And then I didn't. I believe this pandemic made us see that we took a lot of things for granted when it comes to God. And I believe we may have invested more in the place of God, than in the house of God, more in the people of God, more in the things of God, than actually in God himself, somebody say amen. 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 We put so much emphasis on the house of God, and we should. We put so much emphasis on the people of God, and we should. But we neglect the person of God who can never be taken away when everything else can. We neglect that presence of God. We neglect the person of God. Yes, it's great to come and fellowship. It's great to have a house of God. It's great to have the people of God. It's great to have all those people, but not at the expense of God Almighty. Amen. Hey, folks. Some didn't have church, and they dried up and fell away. Why? They needed the house of God to keep them going. Some dried up and fell away. Why? They need another Christian to keep them going. They could not self-feed themselves. They couldn't get into the Bible. They didn't understand prayer, and they didn't understand the Holy Spirit, and they dried up and fell away. Let me ask you a rhetorical question. 
Being out of the house of God, are you more spiritual now or less? Being out of the house of God, did you do more things for God or less? I'm just saying that oftentimes we need the house of God. And we need the people of God just to keep us straight. But when I don't have the people of God, I don't have the house of God, what's going to keep me straight? The Bible, which cannot be taken away. The Spirit of God, which cannot be taken away. My prayers to God, which cannot be taken away. I would need to invest more time in that than anything else. Anything else. Why? Everything else can take away. Jesus said, but one thing is needful in verse 42 there. And Mary had chosen that good part, which should not be taken away from her. Without the place of God being open, the house of God and the people of God and the things of God, some actually found themselves doing things that they would never do if they were in the house of God. Found themselves saying things they would never say if they were in the house of God. Found themselves reading and watching things they would never read and watch if they were in the house of God. They, they, they start doing things that they know they shouldn't do, but since they weren't accountable, since they wouldn't see other Christians, it doesn't matter. And Brother Huckabee said, we can have pajama church. Nobody has to worry about me. I'm just saying, going through the rest of this pandemic, I want to encourage us to invest more in the things that cannot be taken away like Mary did. We've got to invest more in the person of God in Christ Jesus. We have got to invest more in the pronouncements and the promises of God and the word of God because these can't be taken away. And we can't come to church and we can't get with the Christians. I've got to be able to say, God is enough. God's all I need. He's everything that I need. By the way, you shouldn't need a Christian to make you go. You shouldn't need the church to make you go, although they help. They help. Sometimes you see some Christians, you straighten up quick, boy. Well, you know what they Christians come by. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm talking about. You know, I've been kind of getting loose. Get to hanging out. Christians are like, whoop. <laughs> we need to invest in the person of God in Christ Jesus because he can't be taken away. Invest in the pronouncements and the promises of God. The word of God, why? He can't be taken away. Invest in the power of God through the Holy Spirit can't be taken away. And, and this is nothing new. We know these things. Invest in the privilege of prayer to God. It can't be taken away. This is old school, and it cannot be taken away. But if we don't work on the relationship with God, when it comes down for the rubber to meet the road, I won't have a relationship. Uh, my, I was talking to my children about marriage and how my, why my mom encouraged us to get married. I'm sorry, right after marriage, she encouraged us not to have children right away. And uh, the whole point behind her telling us that, she said, you need to get to know each other. She said, you are 19, 20 years old. You need to work out your relationship. Because then you start having kids, you're not going to have your own time. For the next 18 years, you're going to have somebody in your face. And then after 18 years and the kids move out, you're stuck with each other. If you haven't built a relationship, you're stuck looking crazy because you don't know one another because you had a kid as soon as you got married. And for the next 18 years, you reared them and you both grew apart and you look at each other and you look at each other like you're crazy and end up divorcing. Now, she didn't say that, but that was the end result of what she was talking about. Folks, I'm, I'm convinced that folks get saved and, and they don't build a relationship with God and the Word of God and prayer to God and the power of the Holy Spirit and they rely on the house of God, they rely on the Christians of God, and when the rubber meets the road, they don't have anything to show for it because they never build a relationship up with God. Amen. And when God is all you have, my friend, He's all you need. Amen. And we've got to build and invest in these relationships. Show you a verse of scripture here, and then we're going to close. Colossians chapter number two. Colossians chapter number two. So, you preacher, why, why do we need to invest more in these things? And why the person of God in Christ Jesus? Colossians chapter number two. I'm sorry, let's go to Colossians one. Why do we need to invest in the person of God in Christ Jesus? Because number one, you can't see God. But according to verse number 15, chapter 1, 
Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Him we can see. Remember, uh, he, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Go to chapter 2 and verse number 9. Chapter 2 and verse number 9. You know, the Bible says there, for in him, speaking of Jesus, dwelleth how much? All the what? Fullness of the who? The Godhead where? Bodily. Folks, we can't see God, but we see a living picture of Jesus Christ when we read the scriptures. And the Holy Spirit makes it real to us. And we see the person of God in Christ Jesus and what he did and how he did it. And the Spirit makes us real. And we pray and say, oh God, make me more like Jesus. Maybe more like him. I need the person of Christ, and I need to see that. Why? Because I can see him in the flesh. And if he made it, how will we be made it to? And so investing in the person of God in Christ Jesus will improve our relationship. Preacher, what do you mean by invest? Invest means to expend time, yeah. money effort or energy to achieve a profit. By the way, I have never met one person that invested in Jesus Christ that was a loser. Mm -hmm. yeah. You always come out profitable when you invest in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You always come out profitable. So you don't lose. You can go to the stocks and you go to the stock market. They are up and down, up and down. My friend Jesus is always up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, even down in the valley, he's still with us. Amen. He's always up. He said, look up, lift up, be up. Why? Because he's Invest time, money, effort, energy to achieve a profit. And so we need to make sure that we're investing in the person of God in Christ Jesus, getting to know him, getting to know more about him. By the way, you have more time on your hands. You didn't have to make a trip out to church. You didn't have to make a trip back home. You don't have Sunday night right now. You don't have Wednesday night. There's more time on your hands. Take your Bible out and study it. Amen. There's more time, but you know what we do? Like Martha, we fill that time with something else that can be taken away. We take that time and fill it with something else. Like Martha, and we're busy bodies, and we're covered about, and we're over here, and we're over there. And that time can be capsulized and put into the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the person of God in Christ. Why? It cannot be taken away. Yeah. And it won't be taken away, but everything else can be taken away. I'll leave you with that first point. Invest in the person of God in Christ Jesus. Why? He can't be taken away. He's the image of the invisible God. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Talk to him more in prayer. Read about him. Study his life and see what he's doing. And say, Lord, do it in me. Why? Folks, I I'm not guaranteed that we're going to be here next week. I wish I could. But with the events that have transpired over the past several months, you know, I was watching uh, Lancaster Baptist Church. They were meeting. Next thing you know, they're out in the parking lot. Watching this church, next thing you know, uh, several folks got, uh, got, uh, got COVID and died in the church. And they're about to walk, get the lawsuit against them. I, I, I'm not banking on anything happening next week. But one thing I know can't be taken away, and that's the person of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. One thing I know can't be taken away is his precious promises and pronouncements in this book. One thing I know can't be taken away is the Holy Spirit of God and my prayer for the Holy God. I know that can't be taken away. They can take away everything else, but they cannot take that away from me. Amen. And neither can they take it away from you. Amen. But let's invest in that which cannot be taken away. And that's going to be our theme over the next couple of weeks, investing in that which cannot be taken away. Father, bless now these words that were said. God, help us to take them to heart. Lord, these are not new things. These are things that we already know. But help us to be what you would have us to be and what you would have us to do. Thank you so much for loving us. Lord, I pray that you bless now. Decisions need to be made. Lives need to be changed. Hearts need to be challenged. Right where you're at, we're not going to have a an invitation when you come forward, just right in your eyes, just think about it. What have you invested in these past four months? Have you invested more in Christ or more in other things? Have you invested more in the person of God through Christ or everything else? And we rudely awaken when those things were taken away. Well, let's invest in that which cannot be taken away. A vibrant relationship.
relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let's enjoy that relationship. Father, as Christians are making decisions, I pray that your hand of mercy may be upon each one. God, bring to their attention and to their minds what they need to do and help them to do it. As Mrs. Dawson softly plays through just uh, one stanza, just think about what God wants you to do. Lord, help us to be mindful to invest more in you, the person of God in Christ Jesus, and less in things that can be taken away. Nothing wrong with some of those other things, God, but when it all comes down to what you want us to invest in you, the relationship that's eternal, and that will sustain us through the COVID and through beyond, Lord, what a blessing it is. Have your hands upon each one that is watching online, and Lord, we thank God for them, and Help them to be uh, mindful as well, to invest in the person of Jesus Christ. God Almighty, we thank you for loving us, Lord. There's one today about Jesus Christ, a man, a woman, a boy, or girl. Help them to know that they must be born again, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. They must receive Christ. For as you said, as many as received him to them, gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Save anyone that's lost. Help them to call out to you for mercy and ask to be saved. Dismiss us with your blessings and thank God for each one that's here in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.